if we want to integrate responsibility and sustainability into innovation, we need effective tools. Developing new tools is one way, but this is time-consuming and they are often difficult to disseminate. A smarter way is to expand well-established tools with carefully chosen criteria and additional steps. That's what we've done with design thinking, which is a well-established tool that helps innovation managers, providing them with a better understanding of user needs and prototyping the results faster. In the Living Innovation Project, we integrated key aspects of responsibility and sustainability into design thinking with a sound scientific basis. We then tested our concept, which we call responsible design thinking, in a series of workshops. In this video, we would like to briefly introduce the concept and show you how you can apply it. Before going into the detail, we first need to understand what the core elements of responsible innovation are in a business setting. Firstly, responsible innovation means not just focusing on the novelty of a project, the benefits to users and the potential profit it might generate. We need to take a broader view on people's needs and societal challenges, such as how they are addressed in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Secondly, we need to better understand the context and interrelation a technology or product is embedded in, which means taking systemic aspects into account and, if possible, co-designing whole systems. And thirdly, responsible innovation means increasing the positive impacts and reducing negative impacts that innovation will have on the environment, our societies and on future generations. Let's take the development of smart health bracelet as an example. In conventional design thinking, we might focus on users who practice sport. From a broader perspective, we might take societal trends towards obesity and an aging population into account. If we extend this to a systemic perspective, a new collaboration of users, doctors, coaches, relatives and caregivers could emerge around the smart health bracelet that brings prevention of diseases to the foreground. If we consider the impacts of such solutions, we also have to think about the handling of private health data and the resulting privacy and security issues. So, how can we integrate those three aspects – societal needs, system and impacts – into the design thinking process? Let's start with societal needs. Each design thinking process starts with understanding, empathizing with and defining user needs. For responsible design thinking, we enlarge this view and consider grand societal challenges, such as climate change, and societal trends, such as demographic change. To do so, we can either include people who represent those societal needs such as people that work at social or environmental NGOs or futurologists in the design thinking process. Or we can represent social and environmental issues as particular personas or as dimensions of personas, for example by describing their environmental awareness or behavior in detail. We determine ecological and societal aims and measurement criteria in the understand phase and these serve later as a reference framework. It is important to mention the trade-offs between the ecological, economic and social dimensions or between the needs of different societal groups require a proper negotiation process. The second central element of responsible innovation is the systemic approach, which we look at in the first phases of the design thinking process. In the emphasize phase, we recognize and understand the interdependencies, dynamics and boundaries of the systems our needs are embedded in. Visualizing techniques such as system mapping or representation methods such as systemic constellation can be very helpful in this phase. In the define phase, we take a very close look at whether a need is really a need or rather the symptom of an underlying problem, challenge or need. 
This reframing allows us to see under the surface and therefore aim at systemic and more powerful solutions. To develop truly systemic solutions, we organize design thinking as a collaborative process that involves a broad range of diverse stakeholders. The third element of responsible innovation is considering the future impacts. This happens in two distinct phases. At the end of the ideate phase, we assess the ecological and social impacts of the ideas that were developed. Judging them against the criteria that we defined earlier helps us to choose the most sustainable and responsible solutions. And in the test phase, we consider user benefits and societal impacts equally. In order to integrate sustainability and responsibility into design thinking, the setup phase is extremely important. Societal needs, impacts and systemic approach are introduced and established here. And these are critical for the entire innovation process. During the setup phase, we require facilitators that are experienced in design thinking and sustainable development. We need to select appropriate team members to develop a common understanding of the scope of the design thinking process, as well as of the sustainability and of responsibility that we seek to integrate. Responsible design thinking extends a wildly used innovation management tool through a setup phase, explicit focus on societal needs, system thinking, and consideration of future effects of the developed solutions. Extending the design thinking process naturally increases its complexity. Our specific extensions maintain the creativity and agility of the process without overloading it or slowing it down. At the same time, the complexity of social context is taken into account and the whole process is oriented towards sustainability and responsibility. Responsible design thinking creates innovations that are in line with companies' sustainability strategies and that, at the same time, represent attractive business opportunities. <laughs>